testing YouTube. There we go. Hello, YouTube. Testing YouTube. There we go. Perfect. Got that. And then last but not least, Facebook. Can I pop out? Let me see if I can pop this one out. Yes, I can. Let me pop this one out so that I don't have that in my way. All right, and then Facebook. I don't think Facebook allows pop-outs, unfortunately. But do a test on sound test on Facebook. No, that's not the right one. Come on, Facebook. Facebook, Facebook. Here it is. Let's do a quick Facebook. Poll. Okay. Don't think I can do a pop out. No. So this is the one I'm going to have to keep up. Facebook, of course, has to be difficult for well, everybody else. To keep up. All I really want is the comments, but they're going to make the comments difficult. So, like I said, you should be able. If anybody comments on the Twitch or the the oh, bother you? I want to offer you promotion in your channel. Well, guess what's going to happen to that person? That person's going to get banned for promoting blocked block and we're going to how do I get rid of this manage moderating Subscriber only, show moderator actions, show messages. Can't figure out how to get rid of his message. Hmm. How do you get rid of the damn? All right, well, not going to worry about it because I can't, unless there's a way to clear this. Probably not. All right, okay, I'm going to let that go for now. I don't know how to, should be a way for me to moderate that comment out of my channel, but does it really seem to a clear way of doing it. Well, that's kind of dumb. <laughs> Can't even get rid of these messages. Deleted messages, chat appearance show, show mod icons. There's little icons on there, but I can't do anything about them. Okay. You get people coming into your channel and putting advertisements into your channels when they shouldn't be. All right. All right, let's get to it. We're doing uh, some study questions for upcoming tests. You can see the screen, Paul. So here we go. And with me is my partner who's going to help me. Uh, with some of these questions. We are studying ourselves, so we are not professionals, so we may get them wrong. We're going to try. To get them wrong? <laughs> All right. A tidal plant 
is a collection of real estate records, corner marker, a policy of title insurance, a subdivision map. We've had this one before. What was yeah, this I one? Collection of real estate records. All right. And if we do get anybody joining us, say hi in one of the chats, and we'll give you some time to answer the question. All right, next question. An easement across a property would be an encumbrance, a freehold estate, a license, or a lien. Uh, an easement across a property would be an Encumbrance, freehold estate, license, or lien. I believe that is a encumbrance. What must a broker do to make a dispersal from an escrow account when the seller and buyer do not agree about how the funds should be dispersed? What must a broker do to make a dispersal from an escrow account when the seller and buyer do not agree how the funds should be dispersed? dispersed. Get all party get all parties written permission to disperse the funds. Notify all parties at least 30 days in advance. Notify all parties by certified mail. Notify all parties in writing. Get all parties written permission to disperse the funds. I that's my first inclination. We haven't had this question yet. No, um, You want that one? I say the top one. Let's see who's right. I was right. Get all parties written permission. All right. In calculating the transfer tax, I have to turn you down because I'm hearing myself twice. Okay. In calculating the transfer tax on a property, when the buyer obtains a new loan, the tax is calculated on calculating the transfer tax on a property when the buyer obtains a new loan. The tax is calculated on assessed value, the amount of the new loan, the difference in sales price and loan balance, the sales price. I believe the transfer tax is based on the sales price, would it not? A buyer gave a broker a written offer to purchase property, which contained a 10-day acceptance clause along with a $2,000 deposit. On the fifth day prior to acceptance by the seller, the buyer notified the broker that they were withdrawing the offer and demanded the return of the deposit. Which of the following statements is true? I gotta read that again. A buyer gave a broker a written offer to purchase property which contained a 10-day acceptance clause along with a $2,000 deposit. On the fifth day, prior to acceptance by the seller, the buyer notified the broker they were withdrawing the offer and demanded that, okay, which is true. Um, the buyer cannot withdraw the offer until the end of the 10-day period. The buyer may revoke the offer any time before the seller's acceptance is communicated to the buyer. And communicated to the buyer and may obtain the return of the deposit. That's worded funny. The, the buyer may revoke the offer anytime before the buyer is notified of the seller's acceptance, but the buyer will lose the deposit or none of these. So yeah. 
but let's read it again. The buyer may revoke the offer any time before the seller's acceptance is communicated to the buyer and may obtain the return of the deposit. If the seller accepted, but it hasn't been yet communicated to the buyer, isn't the buyer contractually obligated at that point? Because the seller has accepted. That what it, is a gray area. What it should say is the buyer may revoke the offer any time before the seller's acceptance, period. But the seller has accepted. So that one, the buyer cannot withdraw the offer until the end of the 10-day period. And then we know that's wrong. The buyer may revoke the offer any time before the buyer is notified of the seller's acceptance, but the buyer will lose the deposit. That is not correct. I don't believe this is correct. I'm going to say none of these. That's my feeling, and I'm probably going to be wrong. Let's see. Okay. See, it, so... That's the one I want. I know, but it, here's what I don't understand. Okay, so I give an offer. My agent goes to your agent, communicates it, that your agent communicates, communicates it to you. You accept the offer, but my agent hasn't communicated to my agent and hasn't communicated your acceptance so I can still break free of the offer, but you've already accepted the offer? Yeah, that's not how they've worded it in the past. I don't like that wording at all. Okay, well, like I said, that 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 the wording is just weird. The, the previously it was you can revoke before seller acceptance, right? So if the seller still has it's still seller sitting on the offer, and you revoke. There's no penalty, but okay, moving on. Influence buyer influencing buyers to buy in certain areas only when done on the basis of a protected classification is known as influencing buyers to buy in a cert in certain areas only when done on the basis of a protected classification is known as acceptable blockbusting steering or unethical but not illegal you know what I what I think that is Agreed. In order to determine the condition of the title, a purchaser should secure an certificate of no defense from the seller, a estoppel statement from the lender, survey from a licensed surveyor, title search from a title insurance company. In order to determine the condition of the title, a purchaser must, should secure a certificate of no defense estoppel statement from the lender, survey from a licensed surveyor, or title search from a title search company. Title search. title search. The purchase contract specifies that the listing brokerage and the seller may keep the earnest money if the buyer defaults. This stipulation is known as liquidated damages, mutual rescission, punitive damages, or unilateral rescission. Liquidated damages. That's agreed. The sales comparison approach to value would be best used for which of the following? The sales comparison approach to value would be used for which of the properties? An apartment property, an industrial property, a school, or a single family dwelling? Sales comparison? What is the sales comparison approach? Is I think it's a school. Oh, wait. Oh, sales. Com wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm thinking, you know what? I'm thinking of the cost comparison. That would be school. Apartment would be income. Industrial probably would be income. Okay, single family dwelling. You're right. I'm, I'm getting it mixed up with cost. 
approach. Yep. Okay. A listing is for a property that was once the site of a methamphetamine lab, but the property has been cleaned. <sighs> the seller and listing agent should. <laughs> Disclose the fact only if asked. Disclose the fact to potential buyers. Discuss this fact with the seller, but not with any potential buyers. Or not disclose this fact since it's not related to health or safety. Uh, disclose the fact because I just got this one wrong. Because I clicked the bottom answer, and it was literally just an example of what we're talking about. So I clicked the bottom answer. Really, because it has been cleaned. But it was be well, according to this answer, it's going to be that, and it's going to say it because it was an illegal activity, which I thought you didn't have to disclose. I thought it only you only had to disclose it if it if like. I don't know, for some reason it could adversely affect the buyer. But again, this is national. So state may have something slightly different. Disclose the fact that the potential buyer is correct because real estate agents must follow state and local laws and regulations when it comes to disclosing environmental issues with a property. The seller and agent must make potential buyers aware of this fact. See, I still think it's well, it's saying it's a known environmental issues associated with the property, and because this pro it had to be cleaned up, yeah, there could be some up. residue. Well, if someone was shot. No, no, you don't. And if someone, if the no, no, you don't. So I. Yeah, I don't. This doesn't make sense to me. But like I said, Michigan law may trump this in some way. It yeah, may be yeah. state level. But they're saying that it is related to health and safety. So maybe even cleaning it up, there could be chemicals left that could irritate somebody. I don't know. All right, let's 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 move on. When a signed sales contract is assigned, the dispersal of earnest money is determined by an agreement between the parties, the law of agency, the listing broker, the seller, and listing broker. I think it's an agreement between the parties because don't we, don't you, well, the law of agency, the listing broker, when a signed sales contract is assigned, the dispersal of earnest money, usually it's in the contract as to when, usually the answer is when all, when the earnest, all earnest objectives are met. You know what I mean? Like all, or all, I'm sorry, escrow objectives are met. I'm going to say an agreement between with between the parties. I am correct. The assignment contract sets the terms for how the items within the contract being assigned will be handled. This includes the applications of the parties, the provisions of the disbursement of earnest money, and other contractual provisions. To be legally enforceable, an option for a contract for the sale of real property does not require it to be. To be legally enforceable, an option or a contract, an option or a contract for the sale of real property do, does not require it to be in writing, initiated by a real estate broker or attorney, signed by all parties, supported by consideration. I would say initiated by a real estate broker or attorney. You don't have to have one of those necessarily to... Um, Create a contract with uh, yep. Joe Schmo. Yep. So we can both sign a date with him and then he 
exactly. When taking property under eminent domain, the government must advise its intent, pay for the property, receive the owner's permission, sue the owners. Well, we know it's not the second two, sue or get permission. Advise its intent, not necessarily, so pay for the property. They, right. Mortgage bankers typically are the ultimate lenders in most non-government loan transactions, do not finance construction loans, originate a large number of loan transactions, and then sell those mortgages at a discount to large investors in the secondary market will not act without the consent of their principals. Hmm. So a mortgage banker typically, mortgage bankers typically are the ultimate lenders in most non-government loan transactions. That could be it. Typically do not finance construction loans. That's not, that's not right. Originate a large number of loan transactions and then sell those mortgages at a discount to large investors in the secondary market. Could be it. Will not act without the consent of their principals. Well, I don't think a mortgage banker in and of themselves have 100% authority over... I think they have to go through an underwriting process. Originate a large number of loan transactions, sell those mortgages at a discount to large investors in the secondary market? You know this, or this is your guess? That's what I would say. That's all I would You're right. Very good. Well, like they are the ultimate lenders in most non-government loan transactions, too, are they not? In non-government loan transactions. A banker works for the company. A broker works for a third party. Okay. Will not act without the consent of their principals. Their principals probably give consent through underwriting processes. The principals could be, the final principals could be the shareholders. I mean, you know, it's just... All right. I'm overthinking it, I guess. Okay. Assume that the trend in arch... arch ooh. Assume that the trend in arch architectural design is toward more contemporary styled homes. Because of this trend, a conservatively designed home will tend to decrease in value less rapidly than more contemporary styled homes, decrease in value more rapidly than the more contemporary, oh, less rapidly or more rapidly than contemporary style homes, stay about the same in value as contemporary style homes and then start appreciating value. Stay about the same in value as contemporary style homes. Assume that the trend in architectural design is toward more contemporary style homes. Because of this trend, a conservatively designed home will tend to decrease in value more rapidly than more contemporary style homes. Stay about It's B or D, let's see. B. I mean, you're assuming that you know, people want more contemporary style homes. Okay. The seller's primary security under a contract for deed is the. The seller's primary security under contract for deed is the alienation clause in the contract, grace period in the contract, purchaser's written promise to pay, retention of legal title to the property. The seller's primary security, security, that's what they under a contract for deed is the I almost want to say a grace period purchasers written promise to pay retention of legal title to the property retention of ret 
A or D, I think. Seller's primary security under a contract for deed. That's the seller. Is there is their retention of legal title to the property? That's their security. Okay, let's go with yours. But I mean, I don't know. Retention of legal title to the property. So your security, what is it that you that is securing your you under the contract, and that's your legal title to the property. Otherwise, if you didn't have legal title to the property, you wouldn't be able to do a contract for a deed. So that was my thought process. You're probably right. If a house has a first mortgage lien, the property is said to be encumbered executed restricted or subordinated i think i think we know this one encumbered a person cannot successfully claim that they did not know about the content of any recorded document this is due to the legal principle known as actual notice of the facts caveat emptor let the buyer beware constructive notice the statue of frauds requiring documents to be in writing a person cannot successfully claim that they did not know about the content of any recorded document because of constructed notice. Yeah, yep. The transferring of title to real property to another is defined as alienation, consideration, prescription, or proration. I believe that's the alienation. Al alienation? Yeah. The deed covenant warranting that the grantee's ownership will not be challenged by the claims of others is called the covenant of a season i believe further assistant the deed covenant warranting that the grantee's ownership will not be challenged by the claims of others is called the covenant of further assistance warranty of title yeah. uh quiet enjoyment Ooh, we were both off on that one the deed covenant warranting that the grantee's ownership will not be challenged by the claims of others is called the covenant of quiet enjoyment. You have the right to quietly enjoy your property. Hmm. Yeah, but, but that doesn't. Let's what take our. Do with the challenging of a... uh, quiet enjoyment is correct because it provides assurance that the grantee will have the right to enjoy and possess the property without any interruption from other parties. It also prevents any third party from claiming a previous interest in the property. This type of deed is typically used when the grantor does not have clear title to the property or if there are potential claims from other parties. Warranty of title is not correct because it is not a type of deed. Warranty of title is a type of contract that provides assurance to the grantee that the grantor holds clear title to the property. It is not related to the transfer of title of a property. And season, I said, is not correct because it is not a type of deed. Season refers to the right of possession of a property. It is a term that is used to describe the initial possession of land by a grantee. It is not related to the transfer of title of a property. All right, quiet enjoyment. What does not terminate an easement apputenant to real property? What does not terminate an easement apputenant to real property? Merger of both servient dominant parcels. Prescription by the servient owner. Release by the dominant tenant owner. Revocation by the servient owner. I would say prescription by the servient owner. Because that would that creates an easement easement by prescription. You can merge the properties and get rid of a an easement. You and either owner or servient can release each other release. Well, wait a minute. Release by the dominant. Release by the servient. Revocation by the servient might not release either. Yeah, but revocation. Revocation isn't release. It's I don't need you to do this for me anyway. I'm still going to go back to prescription by the Serbian owner. Oh, mother fudger. An easement can either be apputenant, which means that the right is attached to the ownership of a 
particular piece of land or in gross, which means that the right is not attached to a particular piece of land. A revocation by the servient owner is correct because an easement apputenant is irrevocable and cannot be terminated by the owner of the servient estate. The owner of the servient estate is only able to terminate the easement by transferring the property or if the easement is taken by eminent domain. The servient owner does not have the authority to revoke the easement. That was my second guess, but revocation. All right, well, semantics. A homeowner is wanting to have their property appraised in order to sell. What do they think would increase the value of an appraisal? Homeowners wanting to have their property appraised in order to sell. What do they think would increase the property of appraisal? Vacant property, garage conversion, patching imperfections, conversing with the appraiser. Huh. Hmm. Not conversing. What do they think would increase the value of the appraisal? Vacant property? No. Conversing? No. We'll try it, but then you're also losing a garage. No, nope. patching imperfection. Because you would have to take off for a garage, even if you add it in. I mean, would a garage, you'd have to know, like, okay. You know, a two-car garage, you might lose 15000 in value. You add a bedroom, you might gain 10000 in value. So, patching imperfections. Okay. Under what conditions may a contract be charged after it has become an executory contract? Changed, excuse me. Under what conditions may a contract be changed after it has become an executory contract? If all parties sign an amendment... If either party elects to make the change, only after the original contract is void, or never. I'm going to say if either, if all parties sign an amendment. That's what I would say. Yay, we got one right for a change. The loan-to-value ratio is the ratio of the actual amount of the mortgage divided by the assessed value of the property. Actual payments on the loan divided by the market value of the property. Market value of the mortgage divided by the market value. Sorry, the value of the mortgage divided by the market value of the property. The value of the mortgage loan principal divided by the appraised value of the sale or the sales price of the property, whichever is lower. Special assessment tax liens take priority above all other liens. After mechanics liens, after mortgage liens, after property taxes. Ooh. Well, we know. We know. Yep. Property tax, special assessments, mortgage, mechanic. Right? I don't know. Does mechanic liens above mortgage liens? No, no, I don't think so. Let's see, do they say? Um, property taxes and special assessment taxes are two of the most common levies imposed by government entities on real estate owners. Property taxes are typically collected on an annual basis and are primary source of revenue. Yeah, we know. Special assessment taxes are usually used to fund special projects, such as infrastructure, public improvements, etc. Um, property taxes are the highest priority of all levies on real estate and take precedence over all other. Special attachments as a lower priority take priority after property taxes. Mortgage liens take priority after property, but before special. Whoa. Mortgage liens take priority after property taxes, but before special assessment taxes. Mortgage liens are imposed by... Well, if that were the case, then it should have been after mortgage liens. You, you, you reading the answer? You see what I'm saying? Mortgage liens take priority after 
but before special assessment liens. But we just said special assessment liens come after property taxes. So how could you say a mortgage lien comes before a special assessment tax? I, uh, I'm telling you, I don't want, do not like PSI at all. I think these states need to get away from using this company, which is not an essential element of a deed. Competent grantor, delivery and acceptance, legal description, signature by the grantee. Competent grantor, yes. Delivery and acceptance, yes. Legal description, yes. Signature by the grantee. I'm going with that one. That's right. Which of the following would not be covered under federal fair housing? A pregnant woman, a tenant re who receives public assistance, a white male, or an Arab man? A tenant who receives public assistance. Yes. Two comparables are identical track type homes in the same subdivision, built in the same year, and both sold on resale within 30 years of one another. The lots are of identical value. Comparable one was equipped with standard builder model range and refrigerator, while two had deluxe appliances that cost a thousand extra when the homes were new. The home with the deluxe appliances was sold for 500 more than the older other. The, the subject property has the standard builder's model appliances. Which of the following is true? A $500 adjustment would be made to comparable two. No adjustment would be made to one, and 500 would be made to comparable two. No adjustment would be made to two, one. None of the above. No adjustment would be made to one, nor would a $500 adjustment be made to two. We had this. Yeah, we had this earlier. So you have to reduce the price of comparable to, correct? By $500. Yeah. So a 500 adjustment would be made to comparable to. Yep. Less no adjustment would be made to comparable one, and a $500 adjustment would be made to comparable two. Well, isn't that what I just said? Oh, yeah. Well, it, that wasn't the right answer. The subject property has a standard. Which of the following is true? Well, that's true too, PSI. <laughs> Watch my mouth. Whose responsibility is it to hold and deposit trust funds? A broker or a salesperson? A principal broker only? Any licensee? Only designated brokers. A principal broker only. Okay. Who does not violate Sherman antitrust laws? Or, sorry, what does not violate Sherman, Sherman antitrust laws? Price fixing, bid suppression, complementary bidding, vibrant competition. Vibrant competition. What is the cost of a lot that is 264 feet times 660 feet with a price of 850 per square foot? You got the calculator. 264 times 660 times 8.5. I think it's the million four eighty one. One million four eighty one. Yeah. Four oh four oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. An eleven percent loan for ninety five thousand is made with principal and interest payments of eight ninety eight ninety three. What is the balance after the first payment? All right. So ninety five thousand times eleven percent. Why? Why? You tell me then. Okay. 
you got to figure out what the interest rate is, reduce that from the total, the, the principal and interest payment, and then reduce that from the total. Okay, how did you figure that out? No, because that's principal and interest. The only thing that reduces the loan amount is the principal. So you need to figure out the diff you need to figure out what the principal is, and in order to that, you got to figure out what the interest is. So you got to. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. So ninety-five thousand times eleven percent divided by twelve. Ten divided by twelve. Okay. Eight, seven, Yes. All right. Now, ninety-five thousand divided minus twenty-eight dollars and ten cents. It's going to be ninety-four nine seven point nine. There it is. What is what is it called when a fence is built? <laughs> what is it called when a fence is built? that extends into the neighboring yard. Oh boy. A deed restriction, an easement, an encroachment, or a title encroachment. That is an encroachment. To be enforceable, a real estate sales contract must be, in all cases, wait, in, to be enforceable, a real estate sales contract must, in all cases, have an earnest money deposit? No. Competent parties? Yes. The signature of a wife or a mar of a married seller, witnessing by a dis disinterested party, definitely competent parties. Yeah. Offer and acceptance are required in order to have. Offer and acceptance are required to have consideration, legal objective, mutual agreement, or no fraud. That would be consideration, right? Oh, mutual agreement, but that's what I would say. Mm, consider well, consideration. I mean, you're right. You're right. You're right. A seller purchased a home for thirty-five nine fifty and sells it at a point one three profit. What is the selling price? So thirty-five nine fifty times point one three. Thirty-five. Times point one three is forty six seventy three five. Point one three. I don't know. Forty thousand six hundred twenty three dollars and fifty cent. That's it. The primary justification for a zoning ordinance is to control the quality of construction building construction, maintain conformity in the physical requirements of a building in a zoned area, prevent an oversupply of specified types of business enterprises within a zoned area, protect, protect the public health, safety, and general welfare of an area. The primary justification of a zoning ordinance. D. Main, D? D is state. Protect the... You feel pretty confident in that one? Yeah. A zoning ordinance is to protect health, safety, and general welfare? Right. It could be what kind of... If a zoning ordinance says you can only have single-family homes, does that protect the health and safety of people? But maybe you can't have any industrial... Next to a residential. Right, right. Right, so, but saying that a neighbor could only have a neighborhood could only have single-family homes as opposed to duplexes or 
or apartment buildings doesn't necessarily affect the health the health safety or general welfare of people i understand your point but it's saying the primary justification of a zoning ordinance okay. anyway a broker representing the buyer must also represent the seller not share the buyer's confidential information with the seller tell the seller tell the seller the buyer's ethnicity withhold financial information about the buyer it's not share the buyer's Confidential info. Definitely don't want to do that. All right. Um, a defeasance clause is a in a mortgage indicates that the borrower has the authority to pledge the collateral. Requires that the balance be paid in full upon default of the loan requires that the borrower maintain the collateral, stipulates that the borrower will be able to regain clear title after the mortgage is paid. All right, we got a defeasance clause in a mortgage. Indicates that the borrower has the authority to pledge the collateral, requires that the balance be paid in full, that's the acceleration clause, requires that the borrower maintain the collateral, stipulates that the borrower will be able to regain clear title after the mortgage is paid. I'm kind of going with D. Indicates that the borrower has the authority to pledge the collateral. Yeah, or, yeah I'm just reading them over again. I'm thinking D. Stipulates that the borrower will be able to obtain, regain clear yeah. title. Indicates that the borrower has the authority to pledge the collateral. That's a defeasance clause? I don't know. Well, let's see. Stipulates that the borrower will be able to regain clear title after the mortgage is paid. Uh, defeasance clause is, uh, is a clause in a mortgage that provides for the pay repayment of a loan and the recapture of clear title to the collateral upon repayment of the debt. This clause is typically found in a conventional loan agreement and is important to both the, both the lender and the borrower to understand its implications. So that is correct because this is the purpose of the defeasance clause when the, clause when the borrower has fully repaid the loan, the lender's lien on the property is exhausted, is extinguished, thus allowing the borrower to regain clear title. Uh, an eligible veteran may obtain a loan guaranteed from the VA for the purchase of a condominium, a mobile home, a single family home, or any of these. It would be any of these. Yeah. Condominium, mobile home. Yeah. Um, the seller has asked the salesperson to lower the listing commission. Which of the following is an appropriate response? The seller has asked the salesperson to lower the listing commission. Which is of the following is an appropriate response? I will need to ask my broker if I can accept that price. Our commissions are set by agreement with other firms, and I am not allowed to cha charge a lower fee. The Board of Realtors requires us to keep our fee at this level. The fee is set by law. I cannot change it. I will need to ask my broker if I can accept that price. I'm going to remind what Monique said. You don't want to work for free, do you? A seller sold their house under a contract for sale, which called the settlement within 30 days. If the seller later decided that the sales price was too low and refused to close on the sale, which, uh, which of the options could the buyer not choose? A seller sold their house under a contract of sale, which called for settlement within 30 days. If the seller later decided that the sales price was too low and refused to close on the sale, which of the options could the buyer not choose? Liquidated damages, rescinding the contract, suing for monetary damages, or suing for specific performance? Um, which could the buyer... Well, liquidated damages usually goes to the seller, doesn't it? They could sue for monetary. They could sue for specific. Well, monetary damages. Uh, maybe. Rescind that they could rescind. 
No, no, no. That's what they would sue for. That what would. would they it says, oh, which of the options would the buyer not choose? Well, they could choose to rescind the contract, couldn't they? It's saying which one could they not choose? Like, which one do they not have the option? Right. Me, I assume that means they don't have that option to choose. They have the option to sue for specific performance. They have the option to just rescind the contract. They have the option to sue for monetary damages. So I would assume they can't do liquidated damages. Yeah. Because liquid damages goes to the seller. Right. So that's the um, earnest money. Right. So if the buyer, the, in this case, the seller dropped out of the contract. But if it were the other way around and the buyer dropped out, then the seller would get the liquidated damages or the earnest money. Right. Make sense. No, not really. Okay, let's go. Liquidated damages is correct because the buyer does not have the option of claiming liquidated damages since the buyer was not provided any earnest money or other funds to the seller. Liquidated damages are not an option in this case. Well, that's correct. Okay. All right, next question. A homeowner is selling their home. How much transfer, how much transfer fee is charged at a rate of one per one per thousand if the Sales price is seven seventy five, seven hundred seventy thousand five hundred, and the net proceeds are five hundred and fifty thousand. Net proceeds. So seven seven zero five zero zero times one point one is eighty four seven five five zero. That's it right there. Uh, oh, 87.55, because it's per thousand. That's it. All right. A buyer's agent in the middle of negotiations just overheard the listing agent and seller discussing that the seller will accept 5000 less than the asking price if necessary. A buyer's agent in the middle of negotiations just overheard the listing agent and seller discussing that the seller will accept 5000 less than the asking price if necessary. What's the, the agent's, what should the buyer's agent do with this information? Informally, in, immediately inform the seller, buyer, and listing broker. Immediately tell the buyer and no one else. Keep this information private because if the buyer pays more than the agent will earn more, tell the listing agent and pledge not to share. I think the answer they're going to want is A, inform everybody. inform the seller, the buyer, and the listing, because that would be the most morally appropriate answer. Wouldn't you agree? What do you think? Yeah. Is there... Okay. Oh, immediately tell the buyer and no one else. Well, that's interesting. Okay, well... I don't know. That's I'm surprised that's the answer that they well, here, let me see what they say. Um, is correct because this means that any information that could potentially benefit the buyer must be shared with them. So it is only right that the buyer's agent should tell the buyer this information so they can use it to their advantage. Okay. Well I guess. I guess I agree too. Which is not an essential element. To a lawfully enforceable contract, which is not an essential element to a lawfully enforceable contract. Consideration and competency, legality of object, mutual assent, or recordation. Mutual assent, I assume. Because none of those are. Yeah. Oh, recordation. Oh, mother son of a gun. Mutual assent. Well, let's see. Mutual.